Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to CDL Launch Weekend. Benson and Chance in the booth for the final game of the day. And Chance, I couldn't be more excited. We're so lucky. Cassie, Minnesota forced the home team here in the first home season game of the league. Uh, Chance, I'm so, th so, so, so thrilled. I mean, that's exciting. It's exciting right? just to be back, right? Like, we're that's in a true. venue. We finally get to talk about Call of Duty again. Woo! We finally get paid to talk about Call of Duty again. Nice. I couldn't be happier to be back, man. And in terms of our, our next game, of course, the final game of the day, as we mentioned, Minnesota Rocker. The home team, it seems like they definitely have some fans here as well, which is always exciting. But do you think it's going to be one of those fairy tale starts for Minnesota? Do you foresee them getting the win? I, well, again, I don't know if you'd have called it fairy tale necessarily, but this is one of those situations where you've been asking me predictions for years. Like every I single have, time I it have. comes to me, but you've been teaching me how to play search this weekend, Hardpoint. You I'm have Jesus. been the analytical <laughs> mastermind, Ben. So okay. what is your prediction? What are your thoughts for the series? This can only really... Uh go one way really minnesota rocker all the way for me this hoodie is is absolutely fire by the way the, the problem is it cost me 85 dollars so if uh, minnesota don't win this i'm gonna hunt down gary v and hopefully get my money back because i didn't get the receipt <laughs> either way for me minnesota uh, they're definitely the heavy favorite we've seen the power rankings come through i, I think you agree when it comes to the, the gorillas, for example, Minnesota definitely above. I, I mean, I look at this honestly as a weekend of like preparation. How prepared are these teams? How well scrimmed? How well practiced are they going to be? And the storyline for the gorillas has been under practice. It's been like, what, maybe three weeks where they've gotten dedicated scrims in, and then a few weeks before Christmas where they really started to dabble. Minnesota's been on the grind since the team has formed. Like, right. they were playing when Alex was in London, and they were on the grind from the get go. They're a very well rounded team. And again, the hype has been around them coming into the event. Definitely has. I want to take a look now. Now at the quick scope uh, sponsored of course by the u.s air force a little bit of a comparison between the two teams maybe give you uh, if you're a new if you're a little bit more of an insight as you can see from minnesota rocker the average age a little less than the los angeles gorillas in terms of championships though and major tournaments well it's the gorillas that definitely have the lead and uh, maybe down to just that uh, one individual there. I, I was gonna say that entire 22 that is aches just racking them up i think yes. aqua's got another one tossed in the mix but it, it's funny too because obviously 22 major tournament wins aches is a legend i think he's the fifth most winning player that we have in Call of Duty yeah. history. And then the three major tournaments you have on the other side, which is the two world championships, that's Celine Assault, and they got it while playing with Ake. So he's been around, had a lot of teammates, maybe a little bit of that rivalry kind of kicked in as well. So definitely some storylines coming in there as well. But the one player I do want to give a, a lot of love to, he's one of my favorites, if I'm honest, and I feel like he never really gets the credit he deserves, is God Rex. This is a guy who consistently knows uh, the correct plays to make at the correct times. He puts up big numbers and uh, I mean, he's just so, so consistent, Chance. I mean, at the top of the show, something Nameless was speaking about was the keys to success for the Rocker. Right. It's going to be God Rex. He's got to be that superstar caliber player for this team to put up those absurd stats. And the last time that we saw him was at Champs last year, and he did exactly that. He had right. the number two overall AKD at the event right behind Simp. So as much hype as we've been giving Simp, and absolutely rightfully so, I mean, at the biggest event of the year, he was right behind him. I absolutely. think he placed fourth overall with Enigma 6. He finished on a spectacular note. Now he needs to start on a spectacular exactly note. That. Keep that momentum going. As you can tell, uh, myself and Chance, we're so excited for the final game of the night. But that's going to be everything for myself and Chance for now. We're going to set it down over towards Puckett as he gets ready. Maybe not just yet, but he's going to get ready to introduce our, our two teams. Um, but as we mentioned, God RX for me, so, so talented. I'm super, super excited to see exactly how he's going to play and if he can continue that momentum uh, through from where he finished off last year. And, and of course, it's not a one-man show, right? Like something we're expecting from the better teams that are more well-prepared is the speed of players. God RX is absolutely in that like ballpark, but he's got the pieces around him to kind of keep up with the speed. Of course, we jump in the first map. Where do you have to be at your fastest, your most aggressive? Of course, it's going to be in hardpoint. Well, We'll take a look at our maps and modes presented by the U.S. Air Force. And I mean, when it comes down to it, Chance, we, we have the series in front of us. I, do you think it maybe bows either way? Admittedly, we don't have too much information to go off, maybe outside of scrims. I, I mean, again, the scrims tell the story. That's an easy expectation. We're expecting Minnesota to win. However, that's obviously not the full story. We never see Search and Destroy scrims like online. So Ever. there's, you know, 30 or what is it? 40% of the game modes that we might potentially see. Yep. We don't really have information on these teams yet. And of course, I've heard peeps from the gorillas in the past like two days since they've been in the venue they've still been getting more scrim time and they've been practicing as much as possible right. and i've heard that they've been picking up some upsets along the way so the power rankings maybe not quite as accurate as we would have thought okay there's already been a, maybe a little bit of a shift from some of the earlier games a little bit yes nameless looking at you there your power rankings were good but that, of course players maybe coming to prove a point and change those power rankings themselves 
Uh, but obviously, you had time to go ice fishing with Minnesota Rocker and the players. And we saw the video. It was a good video. Congrats, Thanks. you actually caught some fish. But was there maybe anything that led you to believe that the team is maybe more confident than they let on in that video? Or, or, or maybe not? Maybe the opposite? Uh, well, the video was, we filmed that for two and a half hours. And at some point, after you talk to him for an hour, you start asking, like, the interesting questions. Exactly. Who's the worst player? Like, <laughs> you, you start, you're looking for, like, the trash talk. And I'm not trying to give anything away. But let's yeah. just say that, like, obviously, there's rivalries on this team, right? Like, you know that Assault and Silly are going to be looking to take down Nix. Yeah. They're looking to make a statement, if that tells you anything about it, Ben. All right. Well, as we said, we're very excited to get this final game underway. And I believe Puckett is now ready. Puckett, over to you. Born ready, baby. Thank you, guys. Minnesota, are you ready for the final match of the night? Let's kick it off right now as we introduce the opponent. This is the LA Gorillas. With a bang. It's chaos. That was as close to perfect as you're going to see in a round. Decimate lines them up. First up, it's the fresh blood amongst the veterans. Let's hear it for Decimate. You can't hate this two-time world champion. Let's hear it for Aix. Here's a look at one of my favorites of all time. Coming to the stage next, it's Lacefield. And it's the Advanced Warfare runner-up of the COD Champs. Let's hear it for Aqua. One of the sickest sub machine gunners of all time. Let's hear it for Saints. All right, guys, I'm not going to lie. I love the fact that you're booing the opponents because now I want to hear what you're going to do when we introduce your home team. Let's hear it for the Minnesota Rocker. Rocker. Rocker is a possessive force. We're a team of individuals bound together by a power greater than any one player. We're from different places, but we come together here. And when we play, we play as one. Possessed. Possessed by a singular vision. Driven from twilight through darkness to the dawn. Ladies and gentlemen, show some love for your new SMG superstar. It's ASIM! <laughs> oh. 
a fresh face with old school skills. Let's hear it for the second SMG, Alex! This evil genius world champion is now the new face of AR in Minnesota. Give it up for Assault! If you're looking for a captain, look no further than this great one. We've got Silly! Last but not least, we got the man ready to ease the opponent's pain. It's God RX! Ladies and gentlemen, we've got your Minnesota Rocker on the stage. We've got your LA Gorillas. It's the final match of the night. Let's send it over to the desk. Ladies and gentlemen, the match is ready. Let's get our expert thoughts. Well, there we have it on that main stage, sir. Right now, it's our hometown here. It's a Minnesota rocker. I mean, incredible stuff here. I loved how much the fans were getting into that. Did you see how they were walking through and just there were fist bumps flying everywhere, high fives, all sorts of stuff? That is the hype that we want to see. And I think it's absolutely amazing that CDL can bring that home to the home cities of the fans. It's so different from what we've seen before in esports. Hell of an entrance, and I think if, if the crowd is able to light them up like that with the energy, I think it's going to help their gameplay a lot too. Speaking from experience, and Ant, you can touch on this too as a player, when the crowd is behind you like that, you can feel that energy while you're playing. So if they come out, it's definitely a home field advantage. Absolutely. Well, well Nameless, we have to talk about our game fuel keys to victory here. Nameless, what have we put down for these guys to really bring it home? The LA Gorillas, what do they need to do? So, you know, over the last few years, a lot of people have been focusing on Aix and his performance. It hasn't been that great, and at times people can say that he needs to retire. Well, you know, there are some tournaments where he turns up, and going into this year, I think he has a chip on his shoulder. When he built this team, he needs to step up for them to be a consistent force. And we've got Game Fuel Keys to Victory for Minnesota Rocker. What needs to happen here for this home crowd to be extremely happy with the outcome? Come in this match. Well, for one, Assault needs to be a top AR again. We saw when he had a lot of success and he won that world championship, he was the MVP, and that's because of those shots he was putting down with that assault rifle. And in this game, the M4 is very good, and he's going to be running it for his team. So he's going to have to dominate and shut down those SMGs on the other team. And I'm also going to be looking at God Rex for them to be a star. Last year, we saw him have some incredible performances. Let's see if he can do it alongside his rocker teammates. Now, when we're looking at these two teams, totally toe to toe, we have the veteran leadership here that's coming out quite clearly from LA Gorillas. We've got Aix. He's been in the scene for a long time. He knows exactly what he's doing. He's gone from Call of Duty to Call of Duty and changed it up per game. He really knows what he's looking for a team. And then on the other side, you've got Silly, which is, of course, CWL champion previously. And he's also bringing that one home as the captain for his team. Who do you think right now has the better leadership skills, TP? Ooh, in terms of leadership skills, that's a tough question. Uh, a lot of people have questioned Pat over the years of if he still belongs uh, you know, on a team in general. So uh, I think he does bring certain things to the table that can definitely help out his team. Again, my experience with Pat uh, goes back a long time, so I'm not sure how he's been in recent years, but we definitely need to see some better results out of him moving forward. But uh, I think with the, the, the rosters top to bottom, you have to go with the rocker right now. Uh, and you touched on it for, to the keys of success. Goddard X was one of the best players that we had at the end of last season. Assault 
he had kind of a poor season. So yeah, it's a bounce back story for him potentially. I think now's the right time to do it at the homestand. Amazing stuff. Well, leading the narrative here for this final game of today, we have two casters up there. We have Chance and Benson. Guys, take it away. Thank you so much, Lottie. Of course, uh, a very warm welcome there for the Los Angeles Gorillas, it felt like. Shout out to the Minnesota crowd. But the game about to get underway. So excited for that. Our first CDL cast chance. And I couldn't be happier to kick it off as well. You know, you get the homestand crowd. You get to feel the energy to see if the players get hyped up just a little bit more. And even better, we're kicking it off on St. Petrograd. And, well, an interesting map and a lot of possibilities. <laughs> Definitely. And one thing I want to touch on, of course, if you tuned in at the start of the day, you saw a list of words that we're going to use pretty frequently throughout the season and one of them of course was meta and that just refers to the strategy and kind of the way the game is being played right now and Chats, I want you to elaborate a little bit on what we should expect here this weekend. I mean of recent times it's really turned into like a 4 MP5 meta. The SMGs have been dominant those submachine guns up close and personal and it's just an interesting gun you're going to be seeing right. all throughout the week. Well it only makes sense to start off on board with the Minnesota Rocker the home team here as we start on board with Assault already. A couple of nade kills coming in their favor so it might actually help and get a little control over P1. And, and already, again, those are just the scraps. That means you're well put together. You're coordinating nades off the rip to get those kills. You get the early control, and, well, you get bodies inside, but you got to win the gunfights. The girl's able to storm back through very briefly. Assault with a 2 0 start. Unfortunately, he will fall. Looks like over towards God RX is Gorillas fighting back after a little bit of a slow start, but Hardpoint still contested. God RX looking to cause some damage. Packed up and the kills going in favor of Minnesota Rocker and they break through and retake control of the first hill. Silly just went on a perfect flank. Abel's able to tick up two big kills and right now, more importantly for the Rocker, they're trying to hold the spawn zone for the rotation to next. Assault actually wins a huge one-on-one -on -one fight getting the cutoff kills and you see the Rocker starting to pour on the pressure towards the back side of the map. And it's actually Assault who's kicked things off at 6-1. and one. He's currently on a four streak and he's doing such an important job just managing to pick up all of the Los Angeles Gorillas as they come their way. A big reason exactly now as to why Minnesota the Rocker have a 33 to 8 point lead. He's not done yet. Unfortunately, finally falls. Still, though, job done on the side of Assault. He's helped his team keep the spawns. They've kept the lead, and now they're going to jump it up just a little bit. I mean, the LA Gorillas, you see them through the walls there. They're trying to push up through the alley, but as soon as they get there, they got a bunch of Rocker players in corners waiting for them to go through the door. And you talk about the Gorillas. It's a slow start from Saints at 2 and 5. It's a slow start from Blacefield at 2 and 4. Apes 2 and 6. Decimate 2 and 4 as well. Minnesota Rocker are blowing the Gorillas away early on here in game one. Gorillas, though, no, they're able to get a close spawn, so they're going to be able to get bodies to the hill, but when they go in, they're getting made mitts meet. Goderex able to pick up two, and it's another wipe for the Rocker, again, just trying to stay in control. And it's this man right here, Asim, making the plays, a double as he looks for more. Finally, he falls. It's Saints who bounces back. He gets himself a double kill, but so far, first game, Minnesota Rocker in control. Yeah, nice little takeover from Asim. He has been hyped up quite Quite a bit you've been here in the chatter. Apparently one of the fastest, if not absolutely the fastest player in the league. And we talked about the pace that needs to be pour on. But while that's happening, Goderex is picking up three. The SMGs right now are dominant on the side of the rock. And it's really important to stress at this moment as the new hard point pops. It's Minnesota Rocker with complete control of that side of the map. Los Angeles Gorillas are going to have to try and flood through uh, and maybe only have one, two pushes, dependent, of course, where they spawn. For now, you can see them start to try and assault the hill, but Alex is just ready and waiting, Chance. And, and Alex doesn't even really have much to do. He's just hanging out inside the hill, just racking up every ounce of time, waiting for the nades to come through. And well, the nade is going to force those two players to slow down. That slide is going to come in. Alex, last man standing, gets dropped. The LA Gorillas on the break. But they may only have control briefly because Minnesota Rock is still with a favorable spawn to try and push through. 15 seconds of hill time as Lacefield tries to fly in. The Gorillas, he should be able to hold on as he gets himself a double. The final few seconds of the hill should go over to the Gorillas, but still, it's Minnesota Rocket in control, 90 to 47. Well, on repeat so far, it's been the Rocker of just winning those rotation battles. But right now, it is complete and utter map clearance. It's going to be one lone man, Aqua, inside the hill. The LA Gorillas have pushed out pretty much every side of the map. The Rocker are 10 seconds away from even being able to contest. And of course, they got to win the gunfights before they can even get to pool. And at this point, one of the key players from Minnesota Rocker is actually going to be Alex. He sits at 7 and 4, which may not seem too impressive. But it's the minute 5 seconds hill time he's been able to gather, which has really given Minnesota Rocker a nice, comfortable lead. But that lead may not last too long as the gorillas try and hold 
for now, look good to do just that. And, and this is one of the delicate things about Hardpoint in this game. There's honestly very few hills in the entire game that you really can't pull a full 60 on. You see the LA Gorillas, they just lost, what, three hills in a row? Yes. And then as soon as it goes to pull, you saw the map control that they had instantly right back in, and they take the lead. Yeah, Decimate was double negative. Aix is double negative, and still they're able just off one hill to turn the game around. Obviously giving Alex a lot of love in terms of hill time. Aqua's managed to fight back as well, currently sitting at 12 and 8 with a minute nine seconds hill time himself. The Gorillas take the lead, but once again, Minnesota trying to fight back as we go over to Restaurant. It is a scrappy hill over by Restaurant. The Rocker able to get early control, but you got Lace Field trying to keep him at bay and buys his team a little bit of time. That way Saints can get inside the hill, but the most contestion we have seen so far in God Rex trying to pour on the pressure, but gets chopped down by Lace. And again, God Rex so important for the Minnesota Rocker. He's one of those players I think all of the talent look at to say, if he can go off, Minnesota should be able to just cruise through some of these hard points against Los Angeles Gorillas. But again, the Gorillas now starting to build a lead. A little bit of an upset potentially here for the home crowd. It's a 124 to 96 point game in favor of Los Angeles. Finally, Minnesota fly back in towards the hill, but not for long. And again, that is just two hills back to back. You go from a 40 point deficit. Now you're going to have yourself about a 50 point lead going in a new. And yes, the Rocker have that early rotation over to the next hill, but the girls have plenty of time to set up for the break. Uh, at this point, it's so important to just reset, right? When things all of a sudden start going out of your control, you have to just rotate early, get that good setup, and make sure you don't just turtle inside the hill. You do want to try and push out those lanes and take the fight to the gorillas. Well, right now you have a decent setup coming in from the Rocker. They got three guns focused on the front. One man's watching the flank, but Saints is actually able to get the break. Now the pressure on God Rex is going to be coming from in front, in behind. Too many places to look, and he gets chopped down. LA Gorillas, the instant break on the hill. But there is actually a three versus two inside the hill in favor of Minnesota Rocker, but they need to make sure they pick up the kills. As you can see, Lacefield trying to get inside the hill. He has to support Decimate. Decimate falls. It's Assault doing a good job. Silly, ready and waiting to try and take that gunfight. As he just keeps the hard point contested for now. Still a Gorillas lead, but only about 30 points as it stands as the challenge comes through. Silly will fall. Gorillas take control. And this is just the, the tides turning, right? We saw the first time around the Rocker had the early rotation at Cafe. This time the Gorillas get the setup. However, Rocker are pouring a ton of pressure on the top side of the map. Lacefield is sitting here waiting. Good trades coming in from the Rocker, though. They're able to almost get one man through, but honestly, it's just more one on one gunfights towards the back of the map. The LA Gorillas able to stabilize. Just have a quick little glance at the Los Angeles Gorillas stats. It's actually again. Aqua with a minute 28 hill time. Currently sitting at 14 and 14. In terms of standout performance, it's Saints really stepped things up from a very, very slow start. Now 21 and 17. However, Minnesota Rocker in the hill early. They now chance need to pick up some time before this game gets out of control. And someone's going to need to get a hot gun. Silly was able to pick up too, but he gets chopped down a scene. Maybe he'll be that guy, but he gets chopped as well. The kill's getting traded like crazy. Both teams are spawning so close to this hill. But again, the LA Gorillas able to stabilize. And frankly, already, you get one rebreak on that hill, you've done your job. And Chance, that almost felt a little too easy there for the Gorillas. And, and it just, again, the Rocker couldn't get anything going. Someone has to step up and pick up that two or that three piece. If you don't have the advantageous spawns, it takes a little bit extra to get control of the hill. But the good news for the Rocker, they had success on Hazmat before, but this time it's going to be a lot scrappy. And Minnesota started so hot when the crowd was behind them, and Los Angeles Gorillas have quiet the crowd. There's almost no noise now for the home team. And you definitely feel as if, as you heard TP say on the desk, when you feel that support on the main stage as a player, it can help do wonders. And honestly, Minnesota Rocker may need the crowd now more than ever. Still 40 seconds left on this hill as they try and make that comeback. And pressure's on God Rex is able to take down one, but he gets traded. That means the opening to the hill is going to be there. Alex, okay. though, is sitting here waiting. We've seen him in this spot before, but again, just gets chopped. It looks like the LA Gorillas have so much pressure towards Hazman, just trying to keep the Rocker at least contested. In and they're just flooding the hill, and Aqua's really leading that charge for the Los Angeles Gorillas. A minute 54 hill time now. The man has practically pitched a tent and lived in the hard points all game long. Just shy of a 50 point lead still for the Los Angeles Gorillas, but it's not over just yet. Minnesota Rocker trying to make the comeback. In the most dominant hill we have had so far in this entire game, it was over by Pool Hall. It was after this hazmat hill. We're seeing basically the exact same thing. The LA Gorillas, they have one man inside the hill. This time it was Decimate. Last time it was Aqua. They have so much map pressure, and it's going to take the Rocker so long to get over to the hill. And again, that's before they can even start contesting. And that's so well pointed out that the pressure Los Angeles Gorillas put on the map 
force Minnesota Rocker to spawn so far away from the new hill, so their rotation is going to take so long that by the time they finally get there, Los Angeles Gorillas League could be massive. And talking of massive leads, at 223 to 166, uh, and finally Minnesota gets a hill, but there's only 30 seconds left, Chance. Still going, they got a lot of pressure inside. Still was able to pick up a couple kills, but even still, it's Assault versus Zolt teammate. It makes an aches and Lacefield able to come out on top. Now just 12 seconds away from taking map one and Rocker. They got a flood, they got a fly. You gotta go, you gotta get inside the hill, you gotta contest, and you have to win the fight. Tim flies the seam, there's number one, looking for number two. The trade is there though for Assault. Rocker, hang on. But again, the contest comes through with seven seconds left. Now you have to rotate, you gotta get to the new hill. And look at the minimap, the Rocker nowhere to be found. They're gonna have to flood, they're gonna have to fly, but these are tough gun fights to win. Pressure already top restaurant, one man in the hill in the bottom, but this is the pressure. Rocker have to win the gunfights now where the game is gonna slip. That's four down, it seems like Gorilla should be able to close this out. You have one final push for Minnesota Rocker. Can you even get to the hill in time? I'm not sure you can, the hill, it's not even gonna be contested. And of course, it's the Los Angeles Gorillas that come out, take map number one. Aches and the upset story, Aches and the villain story. Of course, it just had to be him. And you gotta imagine all that talk about the Gorillas being under scrimmed, under prepared, under practiced. And frankly, as slow of a start as it was, a fairly dominant performance. I mean, again, if you were to just like look at like the box score performances on the hills, that pool hall, it was what, 110 to like five, basically. Right. The Rocker had no success of that three to four rotation. And that's where the Gorillas really turned the game around. Aqua finishes with uh, just shy of two minutes hill time. Here's a quick glance at one of the plays of the game. But honestly, this series could be very, very spicy. We'll be back after this with game two. Trying to get hype. Trying to get hype. The United States Air Force. Learn more at airforce.com. Call of Duty League is brought to you by Mountain Dew Amp Game Fuel, the official energy drink of the Call of Duty League.
a potential upset in the making here, the final game of the night in Minnesota. I think everyone had Minnesota Rocker over Los Angeles Gorillas, but in Patrick Price fashion, of course, it has to be Aches trying to cause the upset, being the villain that we so often associate him with in Call of Duty Esports. It's the Gorillas 1 0 up. And two things like, one, up, like, can we even like call it an upset, really? Like, it is the first like, event true. of the year, you're right, so you're right. that, that's true, the storyline that's going in, but maybe they're just the better team. There's a lot to be that's learned nice. from the weekend. Again, I'm 0 and 2 on predictions on the day. Not trying don't, to show don't, off. Don't say that. We'll see how it goes, sort of thing. And then, storyline number two is we've been talking about preparedness, how like scrimmed and sure. practice teams are coming to events. Now we go into Search and Destroy, where historically teams rarely even scream each other because you want to be very careful about what your strats are. You don't want people knowing your opening breaks. So now it's sort of just the mind games of you do your preparation in a private match, you figure out all of your game plans for different situations, but it's not like you really put them into play a heavy amount until the day off. Uh, and just to check, you said you were 0-2 in predictions on the day. Uh, who did you happen to predict for, for this one? I mean, again, the storyline has been consistent. Minnesota has been very highly rated. I think okay. even the, the pros sort of had them in that, that top four ballpark. And the Gorillas <laughs> were towards the bottom, I think, literally 11 out of 12. So, so what you're saying is I you, Minnesota. you have cursed three teams today. I, I would not take any credit for any court, curse of any sort. I, I mean, again, like the first two matches were incredibly competitive. Of course, There's yeah. no reason to think this one isn't going to be the exact same. And True. As, as weird as that first map was, I will say, Rockers guns were on point. Shoot pretty straight. It was really just a couple bad rotations that shot him in the foot. Again, pull hall sure. was a hill. They got completely just bullied out on. But they had players that were going positive 10, positive right. 5, right. going on streaks here and there, and maybe on Piccadilly. That'll be their new home. Of course, that will be game two, Search and Destroy. We head over towards Piccadilly. Um, in terms of Search, we talked a little bit about the meta overall, but specifically in Search and Destroy, one thing that we've noted from some of the scrims we have seen online, at least, is players tend to start rounds off very slowly whilst they wait to get their dead silence, and as soon as they get the dead silence, that's when all of a sudden the map opens up a little bit and you see players trying to make those big plays. And again, I mean, there might be a lot of room for different teams that have different strats. That's a great thing that you can do. when Once you have that dead silence, you're basically like a super soul. Drama. <laughs> you can't be heard. Now you're free to make a play. Otherwise, you have to be much slower, much more methodical, or of course, they're just going to hear you coming. Right. However, on a map like Piccadilly, you do have options. You got a couple smokes in the back pocket. Yes. You can go for some rush plants. Like, you can get over towards that A site a little bit quicker than they can on defense. You got to watch out for nades, but there's there's wiggle room. Back. And one of the interesting things about Piccadilly is what you tend to see is, of course, that snipe off at the very, very beginning. Of course, you're using your sniper rifle to watch the cross to get information for your team count. How many players on the defense and offense, of course, cross over towards that A site. And the one thing you said during the commercial break is, oh, God, please, don't let me have to watch Aches with a sniper rifle okay. again. <laughs> okay, I said that in private. I'm not supposed to bring that up. I mean, he, I agree. He, well, he's a legendary player, Ben. Not like, with a sniper rifle. Right. As much as we were, like, giving him crap for sniping all of last year, still had a ton of success with it. True. Occasionally. Sometimes <laughs> yeah. not so much, but, like, he had some good maps here. And then, of course, you watch one of his teammates snipe, you're like, wow, that's beautiful. But to that point, <laughs> to that point is there anyone specifically you think we'll, we'll see with the sniper rifles from either team in that massive snipe off that uh, you should it. see every round? Got it. Rex almost certainly is going to be the sniper from the side of the rocker. And again, Piccadilly's a map where you can do it offense and defense pretty much every single round. And it's almost a necessity at the very least to watch the cross. And if you don't know what we mean by watching the cross, it's literally you are just taking a line of sight, seeing something across the map if you can, or as much map control. And if the players, it's just for information. If you see him cross that line of sight, you say that's one, that's four of them. And now your team can react to that. Do you see four players cross the, the left side of the map? You send your team to the right. That's the generic little setup, just so you know. One of the biggest power positions on this map, it's of course where we just kind of flew through in our map loader or, or map fly through, is that mid bus area. You control that, you have so much leeway on where to move around the map. But map number two, underway. As it stands, the Gorillas with the 1 0 lead in the series. And got our extra snap rifle, you called it. He counts one. But unfortunately, not going to find a pick just yet. He's also seen that player cross back, so he doesn't have a ton of information. You can actually see a bit of a waiting game right now for the LA Gorillas. And this Don't. might just be the build up for the dead silence. Everyone's hanging out in their spawn, just waiting for the dead silence we, to recruit. We're just giving him a chance. That's all. He, he didn't want to take he his life that early. Yeah, exactly. Got our X. Of course, with the sniper rifle on one side, it's Lacefield on the other. Lacefield, if he goes top scaffolding, maybe a little more aggressive. He's peeking. He's going to spot one, and there it is. First blood comes in. 
shot you need to hit, and it is a shot he connects with first blood. And again, LA Gorillas, they are taking their time because they have a lot to work with. A minute and 12, Decimate's able to get the next pick, and now those arrows are going to start to move, start to creep up. They got one man watching the flank, but everyone else moving towards B. And this is what's so interesting about Piccadilly is the map is once you do get control of B, you can actually rotate very quickly over towards A and, you know, maybe utilize a, a smoke grenade or so. Try and get the bomb down there. It's got RX trying to get flashy, and unfortunately for him, that's actually a teammate that comes through. Now it's the Gorillas here in round one in a five versus two. And Alex is back in the back room, and you know Saints is going to be hunting him down, but it's actually... Aix is going to fall as well, so Alex actually still alive. Bomb is going to get planted, so nice little advantage for the Gorillas Assault and Alex. They got to clutch up. They have to deal with Lacefield, though. He's been a nuisance and a menace all round so far with the sniper rifle just sitting at the back of the map. Finally, he does go down. Assault, the one versus three. 30 seconds to go. Is he going to be able to at least stay alive? No, he won't. Gorillas take round one. And it's going to be interesting just to see through the course of the year in Search and Destroy what's the craziest sort of clutch we have. I, I, mean, I was thinking again, about that. Like yeah. the first year we saw like even a one versus five possibility. There was only one the entire year of Black Ops 4 and it was Looney. And that's when you have the stim shot where you can hear constantly, where you can speed across the map. I think it's going to be a lot more difficult in this game. 1v3 certainly, but past that it's going to be very rare. I think one thing's for sure, you're probably going to need dead silence if you're going to go for a clutch as large as a 1v5, but round number two underway. For now Minnesota Rock will go back onto the attacking side as it's the Grillers with the small advantage. Decimate to start. If he tries to find anything with the nade unsuccessfully, Saints is actually crept all the way up towards the A side. This is a very aggressive push here on the defensive side coming out of Saints. Saints positioning right now just tells his entire team, hey, they're going to be moving straight over towards that B site. We know they're going to be back over arches. And of course, God RX might have a feeling of players in that top window. And this is so important because that player in top window is going to watch the entire cross back if all of a sudden Minnesota Rock and decide that B isn't the site they want to attack. But still, waiting for the first blood to come through. Shots go down. First blood for Minnesota Rock. The Apple will fall, but God RX finds himself and a little bit of a pickle as he just tries to stay alive for now. Does just that. Still shots going down, a minute four, and still no true sight control has come through, but that's a pick. You said he was going to be lethal, and he proves it just that. Sniper Rifles OP on this map. Saints last man standing is going to get traded instantly. Two offensive round wins in a row. Both off of the backs of the snipers on each team. Lacefield, of course, we saw. He gets the opening first blood. Yes. You open up a little bit of the map pressure. Then you start to make your move. God RX, the exact same thing at the exact same site. And to your point, that's exactly why we talked about the sniping at the very beginning, because it is so, so important here on Piccadilly. You get that pick, it can open up so much of the map in terms of stats. Pretty much even across the board, a couple of two and ones, a couple of O oh and twos on both sides. Really though, you have to keep your eye on the sniper rifle players. Got RX, of course. Looking for first blood again, unsuccessfully. Right now, still trying to follow the cross to be in. As of right now, at least, no gorillas have been able to cross. Can he find that pick though? It lines up perfectly! Got RX, first blood, he spot Saints as well. You may not find the kill, but information is still key. And, and you can see the concept as well. You see a player crossing that left little corner divot. That's where Aqua's going to be playing. God RX is going to be staring him down the entire time. And well, there's the peekaboo game. It's all about whether or not he can connect. Honestly, if you're God RX here, don't get picked. Unfortunately, Alex has been picked. It was eight from the Gorillas and Decimate now trying to make the play. He finds one. Can he find the second? No. God RX with the pistol switch. He finds the kill. Back out towards the sniper rifle. It's himself an assault left in a two versus two. Aix and Aqua up for the Gorillas. A minute to go as all of a sudden the game slows right down. You just have players spread across the map. That B site is wide open. But the Rocker have just leaned over towards A, but Aix, he has the information down there. Now he's going to start to wiggle over to help his teammate out. Aix is... To get this bomb planted. He's so key. Aix is massive in this position because, of course, Aqua has the bomb. If he chooses to, he can try and get it down, which he does. Of course, Aix will be the first line of defense, but has got RX maybe just got the slip. 36 seconds left. Bomb, of course, needs to be defused. That's the snipe that Minnesota need. Got RX finds it, and now it's Aix in a one versus two. And Aix was right behind the player, but uh, he just didn't see him. Didn't hear the connection, but now we can watch the cross the bomb. They're going to try to hunt him down. Aix is taking fire. Assault is going to find him out. 
bomb defused defensive round one. And that is a big round win for Minnesota. Of course, a 2v2, the pick from God RX, the defuse comes in. Advantage, Minnesota Rock. And a very good round to pick up. I and mean, again, it, at least at the start, it was still about the snipers who could find that first blood. And God RX picked up that advantage. And it was an interesting play because we saw Decimate midway through. Slipped through the crack and right. got all the way to bookstore without being spotted and almost made the play. Had got a Rex not gotten that kill with the pistol, which is a very tough gunfight to win. That round gets blown out of the water by the LA Gorillas, but got a Rex coming up clutch. The man is five and one, three rounds deep. A great start from him. A wonderful start. And again, because round number four starts, it's that sniper fight, which is going to be so crucial. Can Goddard Rex find another first blood? Well, there's the first he tried to track, but the second sneaks through. And that should give Minnesota enough information that there's going to be heavy defensive resources over towards B. But first blood still comes through as Aix goes down. See, I like it really. It's a similar setup. You got a man in the top window. You got Saints over on the bomb. But of course, they're playing with the man down. So Aqua's a man trying to make a play, trying to play a little bit aggressive. Trying to keep these players at bay, and two picks come through. The car is enough damage, though, and you even out the odds. This is Lakesfield top window. We saw God RX in almost an identical situation a few rounds prior. Get the pick, and of course, it allowed Minnesota to win that round. God RX still searching. Of course, this three versus three. Still plenty of time to go. A minute nine on the clock. Minnesota are on the attack. They will need to put the bomb down. For now, at least, Chance, the B site is open. It is open, but the, the Rocker aren't expecting a similar defensive setup coming in from the Gorillas, and the Gorillas are playing so patient as well. Uh, and Decimate's in the perfect spot right now because he's watching that entire cross to be in. If he does get aggressive, he at least needs to trade out his own life, leave it a 2v2 if nothing else. If he can find a kill and get away, though, that would be perfect for the Gorillas. Well, he can obviously feel the smoke. He knows players might have passed, but they're not too sure. Finally, Saints is making a move. He's actually able to pick up a pretty big kill to start the flank. Oh, Decimate, of course, the player in the action. As now all of a sudden, the big flank is actually starting to develop. It's number five on the minimap. That's going to be Saints. White arrow, and I think Saints may actually be doing a ton of damage here if he's quick. You can see him now sprinting towards God RX. Assault may need to spring into life and try and help. Decimate shuts down Alex. Now, Gorillas with a one man advantage. Saints really being a nuisance, but Assault does find Lakesfield. 2v2, but again, it's that man Saints on the flank. God RX. Surely he gets shut down. Saints shoots. He's missing, but finally gets the kill. Will it be an instant trade? I don't think so. Saints has done so well to stay alive. Now you got Decimate. Trying to find Assault. Assault towards that last man standing. The pistol comes out, but Saints does the dirty work. Instantly hops on the defuse. The return round is in. In a chaotic round, honestly, coming in. I mean, it's always that weird COD timing where Saints is able to find his way on the flank and then right. Assault, of course, they basically cross each other pass at the exact <laughs> same time. But, of course, once you get a man behind enemy lines with no information, I mean, God Rex, there might have been a moment. He's basically a free kill. He did so well just to stay alive for as long as he actually did on that site. He was, he was trapped, nowhere to go. But the flank from Saints, the key to success that round, he currently sits at four and two, but it's Decimate leading the way for the Los Angeles Gorillas. He sits at the top of the leaderboard, five and two. We've seen a lot of pressure over towards this B side on offense, time after time. And oh, it looks like this round, it might not be too much different, especially if you take an extra few seconds to pick up the bomb. The sniper battle, not one yet. This field doesn't look like he's going to be challenged again, but that first blood ever important goes the way of Saints. I imagine off the back of a couple grenades. That scene will fall. Advantage Los Angeles Gorillas, but God RX says anything you can do, I can do better. Aqua will fall, four versus four. Saints is able to retrieve the bomb. And it's a little sneaky there from Alex, isn't it? Very nice. All right, you can hover in the back of the map. You can use sound to your advantage. Decimate, though, we've seen him try to creep up the middle of the map before. This time, he <laughs> gets caught on his way. So you got the man advantage for the rocker. And of course, the rocker, they can be patient. And for now, go anywhere. For now, at least, Alex really isn't that important at that site. You're really looking to more mid map. Silly, for example, could be huge as soon as I <laughs> mention him. Unfortunately, curse of the commentator. Saint shuts him down. Lacefield, though, pushing now over towards the B site. Really has been a playmaker, but obviously Lacefield, the opportunities. Alex's position might not be known. The question is, is Lacefield going to investigate? Might just go straight cool. past him. This might work out perfectly, but he hasn't been spotted. All Alex has to do is have a quick glance up, and he should be able to spot Lacefield. I don't know how he hasn't. The bomb goes down. Alex brings it to life. There's the first. Saints goes down. Lacefield instantly with the trade. Can God RX try and get the trade back on towards Lacefield? For now, it doesn't seem so, mainly because he has the pistol, but as he tries to find the kill, he just scrambles away. With his life, of course, bomb has been planted. 
Two versus two with Salt's able to find a pick. Lacefield, last man standing. Got it. Rex doesn't win the gunfight. Lacefield for the 1v1, and time is on his side. 20 seconds. Assault's going to have to go quick here. Lacefield being so patient. 14 seconds. Assault springs in, but Lacefield, the veteran, recognizing I don't need to necessarily challenge as the kill comes through. Gorillas will take the round. And that is just perfect positioning coming out from Lacefield. So Wins the big one on one, and he knows one, he's got time on his side. With 20 seconds left, you know the other player's coming from mid map. He basically has to come hunt you down. He doesn't really have time to sprint for the defuse. He's expecting you to get caught on the cross. So he hides in a corner inside the bookstore. Once you hear that alarm go off, you know you you're know. safe. Yeah. You know exactly where you is. It's going to be a free kill. Expertly played by Lacefield. And not just him. Saints, again, has been consistently making some big plays in search yeah, so far. He's, he's having a great game. It reflects in the statistics as well at 6 and 3. But as you mentioned, some of the plays he's able to make. I mean, the flank a couple of rounds ago was absolutely massive. And well, speaking of Saints, you can see again being so aggressive as he pushes forward. First blood comes in for the Los Angeles Gorillas. They're looking to try and give themselves a two round cushion if they're able to win this round. Such a good spot. He's trying to go for under, and actually another, well, <laughs> just explosion shot. kill for what it's worth, <laughs> but he's going to get traded out pretty quickly, over commits on the peak, and just like that, you had a good opening strat, but now it's a 3v3. And God Rx knows exactly where Lacefield's going to be. He's been there every single round. He's checked it with the sniper, but not been able to find him just yet, but Lacefield is actually the player that picks up Silly. And Scott Rx again searches for the angle. He's not going to find it just yet. Of course, they're just slowing the pace down, trying to find a pick if one is going to come their way. But pressure is going to be on. You effectively have a 2v2 over towards the A site, but not a lot of map control. Very tough situation for the Rocker. They're desperate for a pick. The problem is, as long as Lacefield is here, he can do a late bomb check if he wants. Just have a quick peek. Of course, he is playing for sound. If any of the alarms in this vicinity go off, he'll have all the information he needs. And, and this player is going to get hunted down. I have no idea how Assault did not spot Decimate, but he needs to open the eyes a little bit more. Maybe he was trying to make a play and just got heard. But either way, now a massive man advantage. Got a Rex. 1v3. 1v3. He's 7-3 and three as it stands. But with 30 seconds left, you have to think it's going to be a dream. Surely no way the Los Angeles Gorillas give this round up. They should surely now have a two-round cushion. 20 seconds. God Rx is searching. He, of course, he knows pretty much exactly where the gorillas are, but they're just not showing. They're not revealing as Decimate tags up God Rx. He expects the rush, but it's Aix that shoots him through the bus. And gorillas, again, looking to really stomp in what could be a beautiful first win here at home for Minnesota Rocker. The gorillas are saying, no, 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 no. This is what we do. This is what we've always done as players. We've always managed to cause upsets. I'm going to, a little bit of history here. Do you remember what team at the start of the year of Black Ops 4 was best with their grenades? I'll spoil it for you, it was Envy, and it was yeah, it Bevels was as a coach. Bevels was the coach of that team, now you got Bevels apparently just has nades on point. In World War II, Bevels had nades on point. We've seen quite a few this game. Granted, it's not like it's the most complicated thing in the world, but credit where credit is due. However, the sniper shot, not a grenade, does not connect. I thought he was going to hit that, if I'm honest, but unfortunately for Lacefield, no first blood. And now Minnesota Rocker have to respond two rounds down. You do not want to allow the Los Angeles Gorillas to get to that fifth round, just one more round at that point, of course, and they'll close it out and have a 2-0 lead in the series. For now, though, we'll stay on board with Acro, because he does have the bomb. So far, we've really seen a lot of heavy B pushes, really no safe or, or late A pushes using, you know, smoke grenades, etc. but we wait for the first pick. Lacefield again, just a little unfortunate, doesn't find first blood. And again, these teams are... You've got to be brave to re -peak him. Okay, yeah, you see him crouch walk down the stairs. Nope, 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 not today. I think the Rocker know as well. You don't want to go for the peak, but now, of course, you got God Rx on the other side, but they have turtled up over towards this B site repeatedly on offense. So where the Rocker, I mean, they have four men stacked up just watching the crossover towards the site, but that clock is ticking. They're going to have to make a play soon. That smoke grenade could cause God Rx some problems. One player is actually already crossed it. He may get collapsed. No, but he finds Saints, and he knows the pressure is coming. A hit marker on to Aqua. Oh, he lives to fight another day, and he actually finds a, a, a couple of kills there. Aches with one, Decimate with one. Gorillas bomb planted as well. This could be a, a tricky, tricky spot. Bombs planted, assault picked, Aix finds the final kill. There is a, a, the Ten Commandments of COD, whatever they may be, one of them on there is you get a hit marker and around a search, you lose the round. It is a, a tragedy, and God Rx, I mean, again, 
try to get a nice shot on the player. So he close. gets traded out, and it's little things like that that if they don't go your way, makes the round that much more difficult. But the LA Gorillas, man, storming away. It was a slow start in the hard point on the first three hills. After that, they have been on fire. The Rocker, they need something desperate. Someone needs to step up for the team. Uh, uh, just quickly to glance through the stats, I mean, eight and five has got our Rex. Silly is three and six. Assault six and five. Alex two and six. Asim three and six. No one really pulling their weight here for Rocker as a couple of kills do finally come through. Can this be a much needed boost and the sort of Rocker need to bring themselves back into game two? Well, stun check is going to tell God Rex that Saints is nearby. Meanwhile, Salt is just picking up kill there we go. after kill. We said someone needed to step up, and well, God Rex doesn't need to step up. This needs to continue <laughs> what just he's doing. Pace, it's man. the first blood. It finds the final kill on Saints. And of course, credit to Assault. Much more impressive push over towards this B site and quite a bit of success. And of course, the Gorillas, I mean, they've been happy to play for picks. Might do so again on off. I was going to say, at this point, is there anything you expect to see differently? We've had a lot of rounds so far here in Piccadilly. Uh, do you expect maybe a, a fast A push to come in anytime soon? I mean, honestly, they, they, again, they can just go back to playing for picks as long as they dodge out where God RX is going to be. You can make some magic happen, and looks like they're going to go for a pretty similar setup. See if Lacefield can make some magic happen, but no one's going to be popping up in that top window. It's all about these cross fights. Well, there's first blood. Gorillas with the advantage. Asim goes down. Five versus four. There's the push over towards B. Starting to come in. You have to look at God Rx again, who's been watching that cross all game long. And to be fair, Los Angeles Gorillas are respecting God Rx's ability for now at least. But when they flooded last round, of course, or two rounds ago, it was very successful. They forced God Rx out and, of course, managed to find the kill. More nades and car explosions coming in, but God Rx able to stay alive. He needs help. That, that push is going to come in, and honestly, God, Rex could be completely isolated. There's a one player in mid map who has to win the fight. Meanwhile, Aix actually finds the pick on towards Alex. And decimates behind enemy lines. He's going to be able to make a play, shoot at least one player in the back. Meanwhile, his teammates are planting the bomb. The decimate, the flank is in. He's taking the gunfight. He wins that. Meanwhile, bomb planted. Massive man advantage. You got a four versus one assault. Best of luck. It is a hopeless situation and does get taken down. L.A. Gorillas on a tear. Uh-oh, Minnesota. 2-0 down. Gorillas coming out, looking fantastic. Yes, it was a slow start in game one, but they managed to gather some momentum and come back. That game two chance, if we're honest, wasn't really that close. And this is just hammering the point home before the year actually kicks in. All the talk you hear at the end of the day is just talk. It's about how you perform on the day of. And again, the Gorillas, I mean, they've been getting toasted left and right, but 2-0 yeah. up, they've looked fantastic. Players making big plays left and right. Honestly, their entire team at different points have been stepping up to the plate. Well, as we said, it's the Gorillas with the 2-0 lead, and I'm curious to hear the thoughts of our expert analysts, Lottie of the team. Thank you so much, Benson, Chance. Incredible stuff from you guys. And it's lovely to hear from you today because I haven't seen you guys very much up there. Uh, but fantastic cast as usual. I'm excited to hear more from you guys. Now, let's just talk about what we just saw. S&D Piccadilly Circus. I really did feel like we were off to a really aggressive start despite, you know, Benson explaining how S&D sometimes we can try and play it slowly, build up that dead silence and see what happens. But I just feel like right from the get-go, we saw an incredible snipe from Lacefield coming through. And it really was just quite frantic. But I just want to talk about bomb sites because obviously, guys at home, if you haven't ever seen Call of Duty before, you're probably wondering how it all works. Bomb sites on Piccadilly Circus, which ones are most preferable and what makes a preferable bomb site nameless? Uh, it's going to be beyond that map because with that sniper, you can see that B cross right off the rip and you can throw tacticals towards mid like a smoke and try to push over towards those pillars. And that's what we saw those teams doing on that map. The Gorillas did a really good job of slowing it down, though, in the middle of that game. They were playing really methodical and I like the strategies that they were using, taking their time and getting over towards B and trying to pick that guy off of that cinder block. We saw Alex try to go over there and they picked him off before they tried to get that bomb down. Some great strategies out of the Gorillas. Indeed. And TP, we did see Rocker get some incredible picks actually throughout the entirety of that map, but they just weren't capitalizing on them. What was going wrong for them? What strat-wise could they have done better? It, it was kind of a funny situation for the Rocker on that one. You saw God RX and Assault act actually dominating in the pick category when you're you know working those snipes and you don't really have much contestion. God RX is having a really good map, right? But a sniper is really good on defense until they get to the bomb site. So the Gorillas were taking the super slow approach, like Ant said, and then as soon as they got control of the bomb site, Goddard X's sniper, what are you going to do that with a sniper pistol? Well, the answer is basically nothing. 
Gorilla used the, the uh, uh, nades to work that guy library, get up to the B-bomb site, plant the bomb. They did it multiple times. And I feel like the Rocker didn't really do anything to adapt to it to get a little bit more aggressive on that side on defense. That's what cost them. Indeed. They didn't have that support system at the end of the day. Uh, you have certain players playing certain roles, and sometimes if you end up in those situations, like you said, there's just nothing you can really do. It's very difficult unless you're seriously good at no scoping, which is pretty <laughs> difficult, especially at pro Call of Duty level. Uh, but we need to take a look right now at this incredible, of course, army replay, tactical play here on the screen. I mean, insane stuff coming over from God Rex. I just think he played so, so well in this map. And we know that the sniper here is a really great one to pick up here for Piccadilly Circus. It's a very long map. You've got the buses looking down the lanes, but more importantly, in the scaffolding, you have so many spots there that you can take advantage of. TP, were you impressed with Gonorex? Definitely. He was hitting his shots. He was hit, you, know, you expect your sniper to be in good positions to hit those cross shots. But if you're not able to put enough rounds together, maybe, maybe you keep it out on the offenses and put it away on the defenses so yeah. you can kind of get a better team setup going. Obviously, their setup towards the B-bomb side on defense wasn't working. He shouldn't be the first line of defense with a sniper back in library. I think it's a mistake that they need to change. Who doesn't love snipers? And who doesn't love a sniper montage? Nameless, we have a double sniper package available for us right now to have a look at. I mean, these guys were popping off on this map. This S&D map was just sniper city for us. Uh, but we saw some double snipes coming in from God RX as well. How did you think this guy played and is this kind of up to the standard you'd expect on Piccadilly Circus in terms of s &D? Are we looking at a sniper related map here? Oh uh, yeah definitely I mean that B site's definitely going to be sniper dominant especially in the beginning of the round you see a lot of players looking for picks. One round we saw Lacefield have that sniper out and he was looking at you know top red trying to get that pick and you know if players give it to you it's going to be too easy to win the round so as the year goes on people will adapt and they'll start to not peek those snipers and they'll throw their smokes in the correct spot and execute at the right time. Right now it's just a little bit sloppy and that's why the gorillas were able to win that because they knew Goderick had a sniper, they play slow, and they would, they would expose him and win the round. Indeed. Well, it is Friday, but it's getting to the end of Friday. And that means we're one day closer to a, a very exciting thing that's happening. The first ever Hype Battles is coming to Minneapolis, the city of Minnesota. We're going to be having these four incredible gentlemen on our stage. That is right in the house. Michael B. Jordan, Andrew Wiggins versus Carl Anthony Towns and Vince Staples in a 2v2 gunfight battle happening right here on Sunday. You do not want to miss this. It's pretty incredible. TP gunfight of of course, is a really exciting new addition to Call of Duty. Have you had a go yourself? Oh, I love gunfights. <laughs> the, the random element of the different gun, guns spawning in, it really uh, makes it for a challenging experience. You spawn in after a couple of rounds, you're like, oh, I got a new weapon. Like, you got to figure mm -hmm. out how you want to play the round. Got to communicate. It's 2v2. It's intense. The rounds go pretty quickly sometimes. It's a lot of fun. We'll see how good our celebrities will be. But it's about time we head back to the game. So I'm going to hand it over back to our casters, Benson and Chance. Let's get it started. Thank you so much, Luddy. Thank you to the gents on the desk as well. Awesome insight as always. As things stand, though, it's minutes. Minnesota Rocker, the home team for this weekend. 2-0 down in their first game here in the CDL. Chance, what needs to change? What, what's going to be the spark for a potential reverse sweep and a comeback? I, I think potentially the speed of the game, because I believe we're going in a half and yard. It's going to be much yes. more aggressive, much quicker. And I think uh, a theme of the first map was really, it was that three to four rotation, right? That's the most traditional kind of rotation you're going to see where you have to go across map. We've sure. always had those in hard point. And that's where it's about being slow. That's where it's about manipulating the spawns. On a map like Hackney Yard, it's fly, fly, fly. Be as aggressive as possible. And that's what we've talked about a scene. We've seen great series so far from God Rex. We need those players to kick it up a notch with the MP5s, similar-ish to the performance they had on St. Petro, and try to use that overwhelming speed to just be a little bit too quick for the grills. And of course, if we do see a comeback, let's take a look at our maps and modes, sponsored by the US Air Force. If, if a comeback is going to occur, of course, a game four, and potentially even a game five. We've been the game five duo for so long, Chance. I forgot what it's like not to have a game five. I mean, maybe it's a new year. Maybe we'll be the 3-0 team this year. You never let's, know. Uh, let's not course. be that. I mean, we hope for the game five <laughs> round 11's 1v1. That is obviously the dream scenario but again, I think the argument for the Rocker is, hey, you get a map a little bit speedier, you're hoping the pace of play is big. And then for you the LA Gorillas, you're like, it obviously doesn't matter. All the talk right. has been just that. We're here to play, looking for the quick 3-0 and just to, you know, silence the haters, prove everybody wrong. And of course, if they do manage to win game three, Minnesota Rocker, that is, they'll stay on Hackney Yard for game four. And then nice. potentially, uh, as we said, if they are able to try and complete that reverse sweep, game five, search and destroy. But we wait and see, because as of right now, Chance, if we're honest, LA Gorillas have just been better. 
Absolutely. I, I mean, again, you got to give credit where credit is due. How many first bloods came in just from, like, grenades? Like, if it wasn't a sniper, it really seemed like it was a nade or, or some sort of coordination from the side of the gorillas. They seemed to be on point. Again, after that slow start, the first three hills or two hills, whatever it was, all the way back on St. Petro, it's just then the gorillas on fire. Of course, it's so crucial just to try and get those picks with those names, as you kind of mentioned, as uh, the gorillas just going over strats and maybe just kind of trying to find their final talk. Of course, that's going to be backstage. We just had a quick glimpse, glimpse of them. But in terms of Hackney Yard, Dom, Chance, is there anything kind of preferred? Because I know we've had this conversation. I heard the desk talk about it. Two hill setups, trip caps. Where do you stand? I mean, this has been a traditional conversation in Call of Duty I, probably forever. The first time I heard about it was like COD 4 when it was like Hutchin Wings of Redemption that are going back and forth. And I think, generally speaking, like pubs, go for the two cap hangout. I think in this game especially, most of these maps, going for a trip cap is massive, especially because spawns will flip and sometimes be sticky all the time, and it can be a little bit chaotic. So anytime you get that trip cap, even if you just hold it for an extra two ticks, an extra 10 seconds, you've just you know bumped up your lead by six points. Could be if you only hold the two cap, you have to be so stagnant. And on a map like Hackney Yard, again, the, the game will just spawn them behind you occasionally. Like you try to hold C and B, you put a little right. bit too much pressure. It can be tough. Boom, all of a sudden now they're capping C, and like you'll literally see right, it you to where go to a. you'll just go back. Like B will stay stationary. Whatever <laughs> team has it, has it for a long time, and they just trade home flags like crazy. So any opportunity you really get to go for that third one, by all means. Again, it's the speed, it's the aggression that is going to be key. And it's like something that Skump said earlier on in his interview. Some teams you play against, keep a pace, it feels like there's a sixth man. Yeah. Like, it, it's just so fast, and those are the teams that have the most success in this kind of game, that bring the aggression to where it seems like there's a six-man. Well, just before game three gets in the way, I do want to take a quick look at uh, our quick scope once again, and then if I, of course, the, the U.S. Army, uh, just to get a little bit of insight, maybe if you're, you're new and you've not been following maybe some of the, uh, the, the, the team changes that have come through, of course, in terms of average age, Minnesota Rocker, a little younger, championships, world championships, that is, of course, equal. Major tournaments. <clears throat> uh, well, Aix has a pretty deciding factor to changing that number there for the Los Angeles Gorillas. Yeah, and again, I think one of the points the desk kind of hammered out was focusing on Aix. Like, yes, yeah. historically, obviously, phenomenal Call of Duty player, fifth most winning player of all time in the esports, so he's great. But the past few years, Obviously, you have to mention the World Championship, but other than that, it, it has been lackluster, not up to snuff, and that's what Nameless and TP were hammering home. We want to see Aix back with the fire, with the passion, and, well, you got to admit, the first two maps, we did see exactly that. Yes, we absolutely did, and, of course, I asked you, well, what needs to happen for a potential Minnesota Rocket comeback? Do you believe? Do you, do you believe that you could see this now? Or, or do you think Los Angeles Gorillas, from what you've seen in Game 1 and Game 2, more so Game 1, it being respawn, is enough for you to say, no, this is actually going to be a 3 0? I mean, absolutely believe. I, this is a, a very well rounded team the Rocker have built for themselves. I think they're all, all very calm, level headed players. I mean, again, two world champions on, on that side of the stage, right? A couple young players, but I mean, a seam, you have to imagine, is a player that's going to be hungry. Got our Rex, fourth at champs last year. He's dealt with pressure situations. And then again, Alex is fantastic. He's been great over on the, the across the pond, so to speak, now playing with some Americans, but very well-rounded team, very headstrong, very capable. I think they can do it. Of course, you mentioned Goddard Rex and his performance at last year's champs. In game two, he was massive for the Minnesota Rocker. His sniper was, uh, was crisp. It was clean chance, but unfortunately, it just wasn't enough to see Minnesota Rocker take game two. And of course, even if, like you might imagine one of those rounds where you got the hit marker, maybe those little oh, magical could plays so could have helped you out a little bit. But even still, it, it was just a pretty dominating performance for LA Gorillas, who need to make sure they keep their foot on the gas as well, right? If Hackney yes. might be a bit of a problem point for Dom, then that might roll into the hard point. All of a sudden, game five, now the nerves are kicking in. They just want to end it early. And I was going to say, it's those magical plays which all of a sudden may wake the crowd up a little bit, get them back on your side. Because at the start of the hard point, when the crowd was loud for Minnesota Rocker, they were rocking, to yeah. be completely honest. They were in cruise control, and then all of a sudden, things slowed down. I had to, just at least once. Just things slowed down, and, and Los Angeles Gorillas came back and, of course, took it. Since then, they've been in control of the series. And this is just an interesting time as well, not just in the series, because one team is trying to work on their first comeback, but generally just in the year. Like, at, at the start, this is the most, like, fresh reset we've ever had to the rosters in Call of Duty, maybe yeah. ever. I mean, every single team got, like, kind of mis uh, mixed up a little bit. Mm -hmm. They jumbled them up as much as possible. The top three teams from last year, United the World Championship squad, they split up to four different teams. Yes. 100 Thieves, the second best team of the year, got split up to they three or four up. teams. <laughs> Opti Gaming, the exact same thing. So 
it's a fresh start where all these players have an opportunity to kind of change like their their fates, their destiny, their story and, in COD. And Aix is a perfect example. Of I'm that. so glad you mentioned that because it's something that you heard TP on the desk earlier on kind of mention. In terms of Aix and his career, of course, it's a prestigious one, one full of a, a dynasty run, world championships, many many championships as well, just in in terms of uh, you know major events. But still, in, in recent times, it hasn't really felt as if it's the aches of old. And this is, as you mentioned, a massive, massive reset where maybe, just maybe, he can come out and say, no, 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 aches is back, and I'm back in a very real fashion. And, and yes, I don't think a lot of people would think that or predict that, especially when you look at power rankings, for example. But so far from what we've seen, it's going pretty well. It's going pretty well, but you got to keep the ball rolling. But it's really just 10 players across. This is a time to build a story for yourself. The biggest year in Call of Duty history. Yes. Make a name. If you're on the player like a seam, if you're not a legend, this is your second year. Make it a great sophomore year. Make a name for yourself. <laughs> and it is important to mention, every single game this year is so, so important. In terms of the tournament format, you heard Miles do a fantastic uh, voiceover to, to a video and explain a video. Every time you win, you get 10 points, right? And those 10 points will go towards a total at the end of the year to qualify for playoffs and, of course, championship weekend. The top four, in terms of points, automatically qualify. That's massive. You cannot slack. You know, previously, when we've had pro leagues in the past, it's been, oh, well, it doesn't really matter that much, does it? It really does this year, Chance. It really, really matters. It's crucial. Absolutely. Like the things that used to get solved in the past is you know who's at the top, you know who's at the bottom, but now it's going to be a situation where it's going to take a very long time for anyone really sets themselves apart right. and gets that guarantee. So it's going to be a dogfight through the year. But if you start at the bottom slot and you just have to look at that mountain you have to climb, it might turn into a situation maybe, what, two months in where you're like, boys, we're going to have to win two of these <laughs> tournaments just to like have yeah. hope. And it pours the pressure on. So any win you get is going to be massive just to give you a little bit of an edge the deeper and deeper you go into the year. You absolutely must start off strong. And to your point, Chance, you do not want to fall into such a big deficit. Of course, our current series, Los Angeles Gorillas versus the Minnesota Rocker, our home team, of course, here in Minnesota this weekend as it stands. Los Angeles Gorillas with a 2-0 lead. And if you are just tuning in, the tale and the story, really, of this series was a hot start from Minnesota Rocker. And then all of a sudden, in game one, things turned drastically around. And the Gorillas really took control of the series. They closed that one out. We then head into game two, which was, to be fair, chance, relatively back and forth in the early rounds. And then all of a sudden, a two-round lead developed. And once it did, Los Angeles Gorillas never let go. Vaguely similar to what we saw on the first map, right? LA Gorillas just eventually kind of flipped that switch, crank it up just a little bit, and sort of the thing we were talking about for Hackney Yard domination, about the speed. I think the Gorillas heard it, and they're like, you know what? Let's <laughs> slow this series down as much as possible. We're going to pump the brakes and just, like, ice the rocker. Just make them think about, oh, you guys wanted to jump into the next match? No. Let's slow this oh, down, Ben. Oh, hold on. I just got a pretty important uh, update. It was actually a restricted item used in game two, which means the score is actually going to go 1-1. One, one. Minnesota Rocker will take game two. A big, big piece of information coming from uh, from the, the League Ops team in production. Thank you for, of course, uh, informing us. That's what the delay was. We'll try and get confirmation on exactly what it was that was uh, was used. Of course, there's a, we have a lot of screens here, so we, we, we missed it. But uh, either way, Minnesota Rocker, they didn't miss it. They called it out straight away, went to the ref, and hey, 1-1. One, one. Rules are rules, guys. Rules are rules. What's a year without a little drama, Ben? Huh? Hey, Let's just course. mix it up right away. Just give the Rocker one for... I mean, not for free. Well, you tried hard. Right? Like, hey, gorillas. <laughs> that was for gut RX. Nice there job, you go. Good oh, snipes, pal. Gotta Good work on those snipes. packs, those nades. Maybe. Well, that woke the crowd up. There you go. You didn't technically win it, but you, I guess you, you, you did technically win it. As it stands. Is that a you can't do that chant? That's like the most polite. You can't, you can't use that. Oh, I, use, oh, I apologize. Yes, because of course they're, 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 they're mocking the gorillas as they did when they walked out. That with is the, the most helpful cheer I've ever heard. They're like, hey guys, by the way, you <laughs> yeah. can't use that. Just so you know, should this go to Mountain Earth 5, make sure you have that off your class. Uh, you know? as, as we said, uh, now, of course, series tied 1-1. One, one, so things are getting a little more exciting. But if you are tuning in now, or maybe just a little bit late, we'll take a look at some highlights from game one. Of course, it was a very interesting hard point. As we mentioned, Minnesota Rocket, they started off so strong, Chance. Oh, these are the double nades coming off the rip, too. Just the nade coordination. I mean, the story of this series, if nothing else, ignore the map forfeit. It's about the grenades, really. But not actually. It was really just, again, Ellie Gorillas pouring on the pace. I wish we had an idea of what exactly item was used or what attachment, whatever it might have been. But 
either way, now the story for the gorillas, it's going to need to be about the, the mental regain, the bounce back. This is where your oh. coach Bevels oh. comes into play. Uh, Aches might regret standing up, doing the, uh, the old talking hand signs across or maybe, the stage. Maybe they can win the next two and be like, we just won four maps off you oh. guys. There's so much trash talk potential, but again, the gorillas, they need to hit the regain, settle down, whatever it might have been, and go bounce back. Not the time to lose four. And, and think, I mean, to your point, I mean, you talk about players uh, on a professional level and how they're so often very composed in those situations. Well, having a map win just stripped away from you can be a, a little upsetting. And yes. of course, if you are Los Angeles Gorillas, you are going to have to just stay calm here, Chance, as you head into game three. Make sure you just keep your cool. OK, this this might be a Maven stat that I'm making up at the top of my Go head. Go for it. Why but not? I think, new year, new year. I, I think historically, we've always had situations where anytime there's a map reset, an issue that m messes with one of the teams, anytime you go to the next map, that team mentally collapses. I think Gen G last year on like a seaside hardpoint was the first I can, time. I can think back to our Optic E6 as well. Uh, it's, hap it's happened a couple of times. It has. Where the teams bounce back or they collapse under they the mental strength. They collapse under the mental Right. So I'm saying I think that happens almost every time where teams aren't able to bounce back. And I think last year with Gen.G was one of the first time we've seen them be mentally tough. We get to see if the Gorillas can do the same. All right. Game three underway. Here we go. Domination on Hackney Yard. As it stands, series is tied one to one. We're going to kick things off of with Alex as he's currently trying to secure B. And I think already, though, you see kind of general strategies. Gorillas, they're going for a map swarm. I think they're already potentially thinking about pushing over towards A. And again, it's a situation where you're just going to see these players just pushing for the opposite team's home flag constantly. But right now, Gorillas doing their best job trying to get that progression down at B. But it looks like the Rocker have broken through. Well, it's a hot start from Assault, currently 2-0. and oh, And he looks to secure the hill as well. And that should be B locked in. So 2-1, to one, hill set up. For Minnesota Rocker, they will now, of course, stop building themselves a lead. And the Rocker right now, they just have most of their bodies stacked around this B flag. A player, though, through the top window. Aqua is able to break through. And now you see Gorillas, instead of going for that home flag, it is the swarm over towards B. Four bodies near the flag, but someone has to hop on. And this is why Silly has a very interesting decision. He's mid-map. Does he want to overextend, put pressure on Los Angeles Gorillas' home hill, or track back towards B and try and defend? Well, it seems for now that the defensive option is, is great. But actually, Minnesota Rocker, they've spawned over towards C. So a, a chance here for them to completely flip things, and they're going to go for the trip cap. Los Angeles Gorillas, you've got to respond here. Gorillas just dropped the ball massively. They never actually tried to hop on the B flag, even when they had four bodies near it. And again, if you leave the back spawns open even an inch, players just spawn there like crazy. And now if you're Minnesota Rocket, they go for the D cap to try and just put pressure back on Los Angeles Gorillas. They decide, no, we have to concede the D cap, go for the cap instead, because they lose control of the A hill. So as it stands, Minnesota Rock is still with a two to one hill advantage. And again, Assault with the hot start at four and one. The score stands at 13 to 14 with just shy of a minute played so far. And now the Rocker again trying to keep those mid-map spawns. But in spite of the fact that A control is on the side of the Gorillas, you actually see Decimate. He's going to spawn up by top offices. And you're going to see a lot of chaos like that. And it's about how you make those adjustments. But LA Gorillas, they take the adjustments. Off spawn, Decimate picks up a kill, gives his team clearance to beat. They retain the flag. And you're absolutely right. <laughs> Domination is not necessarily about holding a perfect setup. It's about reacting during the chaotic moments, making the right decisions in crunch time. The B Hill, of course, uh, looking to be targeted now by Minnesota Rocker. Aqua, though, with a good game so far in terms of stats, seven and three. Lacefield as well, seven kills to his name as he sits at seven and six. Towards the Rocker, a couple bodies in towards this B flag, but they're not quite on it yet. And you got players behind enemy lines, but Assault taking care of them one by one. Now feels he can slide over towards this B flag, and you see the kill feed is purple on the oh, left oh, side. Oh, oh. You get the five men down, you get the B flag, but now you got to worry about your home point potentially. Retake has been secured, and you're absolutely right. Gorillas have actually spawned over uh, really on the C side of the map, and they've actually been able to slay their way all the way back to their home hill. There was a chance there where they could have maybe gone for that C hill. They opt against it. All that potentially cost them the score. 55 to 34, still Minnesota Rocker with B and C locked in. Gorillas only controlling A. Yeah, you've seen quite a few opportunities for the girls to go for I the mean, home they, they flag. They've spawned there again. They spawn right again. next to it. They are putting so much emphasis on trying to hold the, the B and A setup, but now they're just getting punished and the Rocker taking full advantage. And that gun fight from Assault was so, so important because he was on Gorilla's home hill or home flag. If he doesn't actually win that, all of a sudden, you would have seen Rocket just pinned in on that B hill, and it would have been a horrible situation, which could have at least given Gorillas a little bit of life. But so far, that story we mentioned, Chance, what happens in those situations where 
games are stripped from teams. It's Minnesota Rocker with the lead. Of course, right now, Rocker, I mean, they just have a little bit of pressure everywhere on the map. You see the Gorillas, they're fighting hard to try to get to the A site, but when they don't have success there, they're able to go for B. You got Silly up top trying to take a player off the B flag, but a little bit too late. Gorillas take it over. Best mate just shut down Assault, and that's only his third death so far in about three minutes of game time. The B Hill currently a big contest going on there. Ake's looking to try and find the kill, does so. It's a scene that goes down. And Gorillas try and lock it in. The lead is uh, 77 to 46 as things stand. Both teams just getting one point each. Of course, that flag on B is neutralized. No points being accrued from either side. But of course, that means either team, should they get to the flag a little bit quicker to cap. And Aqua thinking about making the move, but the gunfight not one gets shot in the side. And remember, that's a perfect situation for Minnesota Rocker. They don't need to cap B. They can just keep the Gorillas off. They have a nice, sizable, substantial lead as things stand. But they're going to go for B anyway. Lacefield's going to try and challenge. God Rx is there, though. Can he find one more? Aqua top window. An important gunfight, Aqua had to win, but Asim slides straight back in, and B is locked in again. Minnesota Rocker have played this first half very, very well. And right now, it's just about that lead extension. You got another minute left. You're already up by 30, and if you got the two flags, well, you can bump it up another 12 points. And, well, being up by 40 going into the half, it's a very comfortable lead. Obviously, you can slip away on hack the yards, but you'll feel good going into the second set. One of the players I'm really looking at on the Gorilla side to step up is actually Saints, 7 and 14. Of course, Domination was played competitively uh, during the, the Ghost year. He had some success back then. I really want to see him step up his performances. He's no stranger to this game mode, but really needs to start plugging in his brain, if nothing else, and really just trying to stick with his team, making the correct decisions can be so, so important, because as it stands, Minnesota Rocker are building an even bigger lead with just 30 seconds to go here in the first round, 104 to 63. It seems like as soon as the Rocker was really able to stabilize that AB flag hole, they've just been on point for the past minute and a half, and however long it's been, but they've been doing very well. Finally, the Gorillas get pressure over towards B, but even if this cap comes in, there's the despawn. It's going to be two ticks. You're going to find yourself down by just about 40 points going into the side number two. And damage has been done. This is going to be so, so difficult for Los Angeles Gorillas to come back in that second half because honestly, Minnesota Rocker have played that first half damn near perfectly. Chance the lead 112 to 71. And Assault, by the way, big chilling. He is having himself a very nice game. I think about it's 17 incredible. and 5, 17 think, and 6 yeah. at the moment, having a very nice performance in the first half. Looking to, you know, drop a little 30 bomb potentially over the, the course of the second half. Uh, and you mentioned, of course, maybe a, a change of pace could help Minnesota Rocker a little bit. They were uh, maybe a little more aggressive there, would you say, in that first half? I, I mean, again, it was just like, it was very chaotic and very aggressive for the early portion, but as soon as they really stabilized with the A and B flags, they really just kind of not even flipped the switch, honestly slowed it down and just held stable. Well, as it stands, it is decimated. It's 17 and 11 leading the way for the Los Angeles Gorillas, but it's Assault on the other side who's been perfect. 17 and 6 as he looks to try and find a pick up towards B. There's the first, but did he find the, the player capping? It's going to be Lacefield, but in comes the pinch, and this is beautiful domination from Minnesota Rocker. Decimate should fall as well. Assault is having his way with absolutely everyone on the Gorillas. Well, Ace is going to chop them out, but while that's happening, the Rocker, well, they were pouring pressure. You actually see number five is kind of broken through on the map. Of course, Alex's mid-map is going to fall, but right now it's a scene. He is putting on the pressure, drawing away the enforcements from the Gorillas. That's perfect, too. Three players actually looking for a scene. And in this situation, do you just maybe want to want to leave him? He's really causing too much harm. I mean, he might not be causing harm, but actually, I mean, it's four errors right now for LA Gorillas that are just trying they to hunt him down. And yes, Decimate's <laughs> finally able to get him, but while that's happening, Assault has managed to find himself so far on the B flag. The Rocker have managed to find themselves mid map before on the pressure, but Assault's going to fall. He's able to despawn the flag, but the Gorillas are going to be right back. And all that pressure, all that confusion to seem just caused, well, all for naught. LA Gorillas started out down by a little bit more than 40, now just down by 30. They're chipping away. But again, Asim doing the exact same thing. Keep your eye on the minimap. Now over towards the A hill, you will see a scene put a lot of pressure there. Does he want to go for the D cap? Again, force the resources from Los Angeles Gorillas away from the mid-neutral hill and allow his teammates to fly in and contest B. The neutral comes in at A. Asim is still alive. He's making very, very intelligent plays here. Just, again, trying to keep that point lead. He doesn't need to do anything flashy. A one-to-one -one hill is an advantage for Minnesota Rocker as Asim goes full. It seems Gorillas will retake control of the home hill.
They're able to get that second flag back. Still, though, down by 30 points. Asim has done a fantastic job of just being annoying. But and he's going to do it again. It, keep, keep your eye on the, the top side of that mini-map, the, the, the forward arrow. That's going to be Asim again. His consistent game plan every single time he spawns chance is to get towards Gorilla's home hill. I, I mean, even still, as great as he's been doing, it hasn't been successful for the team. And now you got LA Gorillas kind of watching that pressure. That's going to be Aqua's job. Meanwhile, ton of gunfights going down mid-map. LA Gorillas cleaning shop to the point where Decimate goes on a flank by the time he gets around. Round. Nobody's home because this team has done the work for them. So much control this entire half. That AV flag setup just going so way for the gorillas. And yes, a team is behind enemy lines again, but it gets cleaned up a third time. And finally, now Los Angeles gorillas, they're spawning out a little bit. So it's going to open the doors over towards B. Lacefield, though, looking to once again try and secure it. But you can see the purple players from the Minnesota Rocker. They've surged in. Aqua, though, will find one. Can he find more? Number two, top hallway shut down. A Minnesota Rocker will claim what is rightfully theirs, be held under their control. But now, of course, Gorillas, they're spawning at the top side of the map. They got options. Do you want to go for the fast flank to B? Do you want to overextend and cap C? Well, obviously they don't. They've been very content with the A, B setup. And of course, they're able to clear out a bit of pressure over towards B. But right now, it's Alex making the big play. He has to go big. Dreams a lot. Unfortunately, he falls. And now, all of a sudden, Gorillas again put pressure over towards B with 2 minutes 45 to go. 154 to 2, or 127. Here's the score. Advantage Minnesota Rocker, but again, Gorillas keep the pressure on. Two to one, cap in their favor. The Rocker, they need to put something different together. They've tried quite a few different plays to get pressure either on the top side of the map with the seam and work over towards A or just flood over towards B, but no luck, nothing to avail, and Gorillas just chipping away at this lead, now down by 20 points. Lacefield sitting at 25 and 18, Decimate 24 and 18, but it's still Assault playing well. 25 and 15, followed by Goddard at 24 and 19. They're the top performers so far here in game three of the series. B looks as if all of a sudden Minnesota Rocker can again try and go for the decap and maybe even cap it as well. They want to go for the race, but God RX heats up. He finds a couple of kills in quick succession as they look to build themselves a lead, which could maybe close out the game. Hicks is able to pick up one. He's getting wall banged, getting hunted down, and does get dropped. The Rocker again. They have a little bit of pressure over towards the B flag, but as soon as they get it, they're oh, getting shot in the back. That mid-map pressure from the Gorillas has been on the point. This is going to get very, very close, very, very quickly, if Minnesota Rocker don't secure B, or at least go for the decap to A. And once again, as seen, the player at the top side of your mini-map, you can just see him there, may think about going, but unfortunately, he actually falls there. So now, all of a sudden, they're, they're trapped, and then C's been decapped as well. Los Angeles Gorillas making the comeback here in Dom. And this is it. This is that slow climb where you have the trip cap. All of a sudden, it starts rocketing, but you got to be careful, because now Baraka has players at A. They got players at B, and all of a sudden, it flips. And we've seen the domination with the A, B setup, and just like that, the Rocker are able to get to. A fantastic response to a very scary situation for Minnesota the Rocker, just over 60 seconds remain, and it's a 13-point lead. Now, Los Angeles Gorillas, it's your turn. Can you try and get a decap? Maybe even two decaps if you're quick, but you have to now put pressure over towards B. If not, overextend towards A, and really try and bring yourself back in, but Minnesota Rocker, so far, so good chance. They're defending B very, very well. And we're to the point. It's got to be the triple cap. They're going to need it. Mathematically, it's going to be close right now, the Gorillas. Alex they is got huge. four bodies over towards B, but the Rocker, the defense is dead. Alex is huge in this spot. Can he find a couple of kills? No, he can't. Three players will fall from Minnesota Rocker, but with 25 seconds left, bar an absolute miracle here. Surely Minnesota Rocker will close this one out. They still have full control of A. It was a uh, interesting game too, that's for sure, because Gorillas came out, won it. It was stripped for using a restricted item. Finally, the pressure comes through, but Minnesota Rocker, they pick up the kills around the A hill, and that will be that from game three. Minnesota Rocker now with a two to one game advantage. And a fantastic game from Assault once again. Got our Rex. I mean, his third map in a row where he's been on point. 32 for the first, 30 for the former. Leading the lobby and kills the pair of them. Just fierce on Hack New York. Very fierce indeed. We were worrying a little bit that maybe this would be a sweep. Absolutely not. Minnesota Rocker 2 1 up. We'll be back with game four after this. Minnesota, the North Star State, and a land of 10,000 lakes. A place raised from the ice with a dash of all shucks nice.
But don't be fooled by those Midwestern sensibilities. This is a land built on the backs of warriors, forged not by fire and brimstone, but by frost and iron. This is the Nord, where they manufacture their miracles on ice. And their rock only comes in royalty. You lit the match that started this fire. You pay the price when the flames get high. Hey. And now, what better place for a new beginning in this intrepid land with all of its rugged beauty? A new era is born where they say the end might begin. This is week one of the Call of Duty League. This is Minnesota. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Launch Weekend here in Minnesota. The final game of day one features the home team. Minnesota Rocket currently 2-1 up. Now after an impressive domination victory against the Los Angeles Gorillas, we now uh, stay, of course, on the same map. Go to game four, back over towards Hardpoint. Chance, this is uh, a chance for them to close it out 3-1. Great pun there, Ben. You're on point with it. Just a, two for a two. Comedy phenom, if oh, I've ever heard you. one before. Thank I you. can barely contain my laughter. But I think originally I wanted the storyline to be about the pacing. The speed of the SMG is on one side versus the other, and the map like Hackney Yard highlights that perfectly. But at this point, I think I throw that out the window, right? This okay. is a story about LA Gorillas just trying to hit the regain. They're feeling great. They think they're up 2-0 in the series. They think they've done like everybody. They're calling us the 11th best team in the league right now. You have us so down on the power rankings. Now we come out with a force like that. And then they find themselves in a situation, oh, we had something <laughs> wrong with the class. We're actually tied 1-1. Now we lose the domination. Yikes. Now your back is against the wall, and this is one of the most difficult situations you have to bounce oh, it back really is. from. It really is. It, it, staying composed in those situations can be so, so tough. Uh, and game three, I don't want to say it was definitely a, a highlight of that, but either way, Los Angeles Gorillas, they do lose that game. So Minnesota Rocker with the advantage. Heading back towards Hardpoint, though. That was one where Minnesota Rocker started off so strong in game one, but they just couldn't close it out, Chance. Los Angeles Gorillas were just playing simply better. Absolutely, and of course, if you're going to watch any player on the Rocker, of course, that last match, Assault led the lobby with 32 oh, kills. So and of well. course, God Rex was right behind him. He was having a fantastic series in his own right, was able to get 30. So if there's two players to maybe keep your eye on, have them in the back of your mind. And then on the flip side, I think the last game, that last domination performance, it was aches and saints. They needed to pick up the slack just a little bit more. Yeah. And again, close domination game. You bump it up just a little bit for those two players, you're right back in the swing of things. Well, we stay on Hackney Yard for game four as we load in towards Hardpoint. This, of course, could be where Minnesota Rocker close it out, get their first win in the Call of Duty League. We shall see, or can Los Angeles Gorillas take us to a game five? We all want it. We do. We all know. Maybe not the home fans. Maybe they don't want it. They'd much rather see a 3-1 victory. It makes but it more the neutrals want a game five, don't they? And the Gorillas want it as well. But they got to win the hard point for the bounce back. But kicking it off, I mean, again, Assault led the lobby last time. Looking for some M4 kills off the rip this time. And he's in the power position to do it. I mean, he was just so, so good. Picking up a ton of kills. Barely fell. And he's trying to continue where he left off. Well, there's number one. 
Think he spikes it just as he goes for the challenge. Should be able to clean up the kill, does so. Once again, Assault off to a good start. Trophy's gonna go down as well. Minnesota Rocker, about to take the lead. Nate's coming in though, that trophy did him no favors. <laughs> now, of course, he got the smokes you're pouring in, and Lacefield trying to pick one up, but the jump on the timing, a <laughs> team and Alex and everybody Good able night. to get the wipe with the MP5. That was very, very quick, and that's going to give Minnesota Rocker now a fair amount of free time. Instantly, Silly wants to push out the hard point now, so he can try and cut some of the lanes down, and well, he cut Saint down there as well. A couple of kills in quick succession for Silly before finally being traded as once again, Los Angeles Gorillas try and break inside the hill and once again, they're shut down by Rocker. And right now the Rocker are desperately just trying to get into the enemy spawn, trying to force a flip if they can get it. But right now Gorillas doing a nice job on the rotation. Their rotations in Hardpoint have been great. The gunfights, however, have been a bit of a struggle because that first still dominant from the side of the Rocker. But this is the point where Gorillas say, hey, we're posted up in tires. We got complete map control. We're going to spawn here forever. Chance. We're going to try to get that full 60. Rocker have started this game off so, so well as they look to close out the series. Once again, it's an Astro Gaming listening with the Minnesota Rocker. Rocky, we're done for the fuck shit. We're on the car. Fire car, fire car. Fire car, fire car. Fire car, get fire car. I didn't say, I didn't say, I didn't say. Wait, another one. Fire car. Forklift, forklift. I didn't say, I didn't say. Nice. Nice. Start to go. 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 Top grass, top grass, top grass, top grass. Alright, take that time. Yo, take our time. We have it. We have it, baby. Let's go. Hold on, I'm gonna smoke the car. I'm gonna smoke the car. I'm gonna give you second green. I don't see it. I don't see it. Chance, you can feel the energy from Minnesota Rocker. They are feeling good. An assault again with a fantastic start at 8 and 2. Silly's right behind him at 8 and 5. But those two leading the way. And because of it, Minnesota Rocker now with the lead 84 to 29. And I'd be feeling very confident about the Rocker. Again, assault has not slowed down. He is triple positive right now. But if you break that tire's hill that easily, you're going to be feeling good. And over towards yeah. Smoke Sacks, well, they've taken care of one problem. Get the guy out of the hill. The Rocker, well, well, they're straight on through. But look at the stats on the other side for Los Angeles Gorillas. Eight, he sat at three and ten. Lacefield, two and eight. Decimate, five and eight as well. Some struggles definitely coming in for the Gorillas and Minnesota Rocker taking full advantage of that. However, almost a little deja vu from game one. Rocker started off strong. It's the Gorillas that are fighting back. Well, still, even if they get these final 15 seconds where they are poised to do, they'll be down by just a bit. So the fights are starting over towards office. And, well, you got a 2v2 in and around the hill. The trades are coming in. It seems going to be battling Saints. And, well, Saints is going to come out on top, looking for more if he can find it, but doesn't need to. No one from the Rocker anywhere to be Throw found. Throw the stats out the window at this point, because, again, Los Angeles Gorillas, they hold down one hill, and all of a sudden, you find yourself at just over around about a 10-point game. Now the new hill is going to be contested. In flies. The Gorillas, can they secure the hill? Yes, they can. Uh, Saints shuts down Assault. And Saints is on a nine spree. He's 16 and seven. The man oh, is on Lord. fire, doing what he can for the team. And still the last man standing, still alive. Finally gets taken down in the rocker. That is a necessary man to stop. You got Lacefield, four and 12. It is negative across the board, except for Saints. Forget four and 12, because that's an important double kill from Lacefield. As he flies in to try and defend the hill, he's going to find one more as well. Gorillas turn the momentum of this game for five players full and all of a sudden the gorillas are about to take the lead right now again it's just saints putting on for this city right it is getting ready to take the lead and that is with four of your teammates negative by quite a bit but either way the rocker i mean again the guns being hot hasn't been an issue all five players positive but they do not have the lead the rotation though they got four bodies over towards new they're gonna need a good chunk of time lacefield was the first line of defense there for los angeles gorillas he instantly falls it was god rx that cleaned him up and now minnesota rocker they will retake the lead with 40 seconds left on the hill right now la gorillas they're getting that like top three control up on top of the smokestacks but you see goderex looking up doesn't need to kill anyone because his teammates take <laughs> care of it the pre-fire on point making the read or has that headset cranked and either way stabilized on this hill. that's a seven streak right now for god rx as he sits at 18 and 10. 19 seconds of hill time for him alex once again doing what he does so well sitting inside the hill almost a minute time for him and minnesota rocket now with over a 30 point lead god rx looking to continue the spree but unfortunately it's gonna end there saint shuts him down eight seconds until our new hill 
That is again a nice turnaround for Minnesota Rocker to kind of stave the pressure off a little bit because LA Gorillas, it seemed like they had maybe flipped that switch, but now you reset and the Hills goes back to first. It's going to be decimate first man inside the hill, but it's just true one on one gunfights in and around that hard point. And this is again almost a deja vu like game from, of course, map number one. Los Angeles Gorillas were able to take the hard point, but Minnesota Rocker clean out the B, or the hill, I should say. And can they try and push through? Well, yes, they can. Still full control of the hill chance. And of course, you, you see the Rocker trying oh so hard. God Rex is pushed up so far into the base of the LA Gorillas. And in spite of the fact that the Rocker actually left their spawn side completely open, well, LA Gorillas get that sticky spawn. So they might have at least a mild advantage on the rotation anew. But at the same time, the Rocker, not only do they have a 70 point lead, not only are they going to extend that even more. Last time on tires, they broke through in about 20 seconds. It was way too easy. They almost just walked up to the hill and just completely broke through. Alex will find one. That's Aqua who was trying to cross. Number two will be right in front. He cleans up eggs, looking for number three. Alex with the triple. Can he find one more? Lacefield, you could be in danger. He shuts down Saints as well. Lacefield finally shuts him down, but Alex almost took out all of the gorillas himself. And all the gorillas spawn right back up, and he's going to have to do it again. It is a, a lights out attempt, but to no avail. LA Gorillas taking a little bit of life, trying to get a little bit back into this game. And you can see how far away the Rocker are spawning. They get maybe one more good crack at this hill before they got to start thinking about the rotation. Alex is like a walking double kill at this point, it feels like. He's having a like great game, 24 and 15 he currently sits at. Got RX right behind, as you would expect. 23 and 16 he sits, but staying with Alex, you have to. He's the man of the moment, and he's not slowing down. A five streak as it stands, unfortunately falls as he gets close to the hill. But to be fair to the Gorillas, Chance, they've managed to get a big chunk of time in this hill. And, and frankly, I need better from Alex. Three triple kills just it's isn't going to cut enough. it to break the hill. You need to step a little bit more for the team. But again, it's such a nice lead from the Rocker. And all of a sudden, LA Gorillas, they have that one hill and turn the game around. Good news, though. Smokestacks is going to pop Rocker. Well, they've been spawning on that side for the past minute. They're gonna be here first, extending that lead even further. Soldier's lying, waiting. The first challenge comes through. Luckily for him, he has the support of his teammates shooting above. And the Minnesota Rocker can get a little closer to closing this series out. They can win it here. They would need a perfect hold. Surely won't happen, but Assault does have a trophy. He's gonna put that down, and now all of a sudden, maybe the impossible could become the probable. Yeah, now Alex is on something fierce. He's on a two spree mid map, but he's gonna find the third as well. Tough man to take down and assault. This is his bread and butter. Get him inside the hill and post it up. And well, he doesn't get shot in the side. Would have had more success. Can't win it now. 16 seconds remain of the hill. 235 to 167. So 167. Minnesota Rocker looking to get their first win in the card league. A home event as well. Alex has been absolutely sensational. Can he close this out in style? Seam and Assault do pick up kills. The contest is in, and the kill is through as well. Minnesota Rocket, nine more points. All you're going to need, and you'll take the series 3 to 1. Desperation time for the Gorillas. They got to fly towards the hill, but where are you going to no go? It's going to be home. The Minnesota Rocker. The first match in their home city, coming away with the win. And that's a great way to kick off your Call of Duty League campaign. It's going to be a long season. A lot of different cities you're going to have to travel to. But a win at home must feel amazing for the Minnesota Rocker. 3-1 victory over the Los Angeles Gorillas. You brought it up, Chance. How much did that Game 2 ruling affect them mentally? It could be drastic for them. Got to check your perks. It, it, it's Got to check it, your it's perks, folks. to swallow, but it's one that has to be done. But of course, credit where credit is due to the Rocker on a couple of the other maps. I think God Rex had an MVP-like series. Oh, phenomenal incredible. the whole way through, but incredible. even towards the end, Alex, I mean, he was on fire. Triple kill after triple kill. Add two more to that list towards the end. Played lights out. Yeah, really did a, a fantastic a little bit of composure there from the Minnesota Rocker. And as I said, it must feel absolutely amazing to get your first win at home. That is going to be everything from myself and Chance. We'll send it over now to the main stage with Puckett. Thank you so much, gentlemen. It is time for our instant reactions presented by PlayStation. I've got God Rx, the tallest human being in Call of Duty. Adam. Other Adam, I should say. You just dominated. You guys come back after being down early in this series, and you get a win in front of the home crowd. What's going through your head right now? I mean, I'm just happy we can pull out the win in front of this amazing crowd, as you can tell. I mean, 
just hearing their crowd reaction, just hearing them having our support, it's honestly amazing so far. Now, there was a forfeit in that matchup, but it seemed that you guys were able to just come into that game three with new life, new blood. What was said amongst the team going into that third map? Um, third map, we just said, listen, like, let's still play as if we're down 0-2. The series is nowhere near over, and we just took it one map at a time, one play at a time, and ended up pulling through. When I was doing the intros, I said, ASIM is going to be the sub, Alex is going to be the sub. But when I first started watching your scrims, you were running an assault rifle. Today, you're a submachine gunner. How is your game evolving? What is your role right now on the team? Um, right now, I'm pretty much a flex. I mean, yes, I do run a sub on some maps, but I just switch back and forth. Whatever needs help with an AR or sub, I'm always there for it. All right, well, Rocker has played their first match here in Minneapolis. You guys have won your first match. What can we expect from you in the rest of the weekend? Rest of the weekend, well, we played Toronto last. I'm um, expecting another win out of us. I think we're the better team for that one. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up one more time for your Minnesota Rocker. They're going home as winners tonight. We're heading to a quick commercial break. When we come back, more Call of Duty live from Minneapolis.